Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on top 10 mistakes sellers make in today's real estate market. Um, today, we'll be joined by John Thompson, the co-founder of Intero, and myself, Eric B. Chu with Chu Homes, a real estate professional here in Silicon Valley. Um, here we are. Um, yeah, I'm I'm in the Los Altos office, and I serve mainly so Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, Alameda County, as well as um, I have some um, experience in San Francisco as well. Um, welcome to JT. John Thompson, I, I briefly introduced him before. Um, he's the one of the co-founders of Intero and um, a long, long time veteran of, of the real estate industry. Thank you for- Thanks, Eric. Yeah, Good thank to see you. you. Thanks for having me on uh, your webinar today. I appreciate it. All right. Um, let's, let's just jump right on in. Um, so what are the top 10 mistakes um, we can make in the real estate sales um, process that sellers make. Um, number one, uh, not pricing the home correctly. What does that mean? Go ahead, JT. Yeah, it's it's pro it probably is one of the most critical uh, mistakes, right, that you can make. Um, and getting together with your agent and really developing a correct pricing strategy that makes sense. Um, is 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 important um you know that you have you know essentially three possibilities price high higher than that what you think the home is worth and see what happens price at market you know or price below market and try and drive you know a frenzy and multiple offers and they all have pros and cons that need to be reviewed with uh with your agent about which strategy is best for your for your situation. So it, it's really key. I, I, I generally am never a fan of pricing high and, and, and coming down later. That's, that usually is the worst strategy, but I understand it sometimes is, is, is necessary for some sellers, depending on their circumstance. You know, you're, you're always smarter to try and price that market or even a little bit below and, and create some demand, just like, just like a stock. You know, the market will will bear out the true value of anything if you allow it to. You could technically you could price a home at a dollar, right? You know, um, and we've we've seen that sometimes before in the industry, agents pricing a home at a hundred dollars, and then it's just like an auction. It's a bid, and so, as soon as it hits a certain number that a buyer says, "I'm I'm not going to go any more than that," well, that's the to that's the value of the property when the buyer says, "This is the max I'll pay." Yeah, so just to circle back on the on the pricing too high, um, I think a lot of uh, a lot of buyers in this market, um, which is moving quite quickly, homes are selling in usually less than a week. So a lot of my buyers, when when they see a home that's been on the market for two, three, four weeks, um, they usually ask me. They say, "Hey, Eric, what's wrong with this house?" Right, and so I, I just tell them, most likely there's nothing wrong with the house. It's just mispriced. Right. And so, yeah, it, it, it's, it, yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's hard to regain momentum for a seller. It's possible, but it's challenging to regain momentum. If uh, in the current market conditions we're in, you don't see, you know, uh, a good offer within the first few weeks of putting a home on the market. Exactly. Let's, let's jump into number two. Um, not, not preparing the home for sale. So essentially, do you want the house vacant or do you want the house owner occupied still? And and the one of the things I would say right now during um, the pandemic, right, it, it's a challenge both for buyers and sellers um, to see homes when, when, when it's owner occupied, right? Um, just like breaking news, right? I'm not sure if everyone's heard this yet, but breaking news from the state of California as of last week, um, 
the, the public health department, state of California, allow, starting to allow open houses, right? Um, and as, as, a, as a professional, I strongly recommend my clients to, to vacate the property um, just for their own safety, but, but also to allow me to, to do my job to try to help them get the best result. Right. JT can probably. Yeah. Add some, yeah. Some I, you're, you, you hit the nail on the head on that. It's not, it's not always possible, right. For everybody in every situation, but if you can, it is always, I mean, always the best thing to, to, to even just at least for the first week, go stay in a hotel or a motel if you can for, for two reasons, it's easier on the sellers because it's not fun having a home on the market and people, coming through and opening up your cupboards and looking in your closets and, and but a good buyer, a buyer that wants to buy your home is going to do that. Right. And so it's just always best if you could be gone and, and let them, uh, you know, uh, see the house without, you know, interrupting you, you know, and it's better for the buyer and the seller. It's, it's not always an easy thing to do, but uh, if you can do it, it, it's good. And, and as you said, prepping the home for sale is, is so important. It's no different than if you were selling your car. What's the first thing you try and do? You wash it and wax it and armor all the tires, right? You know, exactly. you, you, you go through a, a, a quick little makeover on it. You won't, don't do plastic surgery on anything, right? But do a makeover on it and, um, you know, and, and prep it correctly and, and let it be available to buyers as often as one. It never fails, right? You're just sitting down for dinner or something, uh, you know, and, and, you know, or the middle of doing laundry and you got clothes everywhere. And that's when a buy, you know, the right buyer for your house that wants to show up, you know, and it's inconvenient for everyone. Yeah. So let's, that's totally true. Let's go on to the third, the, the third topic. And that is hiding major problems. Right. And, and some examples that we go through is like, say that your, your house is over the, the flight path of an airport. Okay. And so you hear those airplanes every day, or you live right near the railroad tracks, and, and there's a train that comes by, you know, at 2 a.m. every other week, or even every every week, right? Or for example, you live right by the, the elementary school, and there's a, you know, row of cars outside your home every morning and afternoon. Um, the, the major, major problem about not disclosing is that the future buyer, you know, if, if, if they, if they encounter these things, there's there's litigation risk, right? And and my job as a real estate professional is to protect my seller at all costs, right? And to do everything um, in my power, right? To, to get them the best possible result. And that includes risk management, right? And so the way we avoid that is we disclose, right? Basically yeah. any and everything we know about the property, we disclose it. And that way in the future, if, if anything comes up, then we just explain to the, to the future buyer or the, that buyer now that, hey, we already told you. We told you that the planes fly over, that there's a you know frenzy of people out front of every weekday and all of that. And that way we're protected on, on, on our side. And the reality is you, you can't, you know, you can't hide anything. Cause if you remember, they're gonna be living in the house where you're living and and experiencing the exact same thing you're experiencing and if you don't tell them you know about a, a neighbor that has a you know drum practice at midnight on saturdays right or anything right all these items they are going to uncover them and discover them right you so the reality is you can't hide anything you know the buyer is going to be living where you're living and so you know the the best thing is to get all your inspections up front all your disclosures done up front, give everything to the buyer up front. And, you know, it, and again, when that happens, we, we generally see, you know, it not being as traumatic to buyers as sellers think it is to tell them everything. Um, you know, buyers, buyers are smart. They, they know it's, it, there, there's going to be, that, that nothing is going to be perfect. Right. But, you know, I can tell you, as you said, uh, you know, not disclosing something and a buyer discovering something after the close of escrow is uh, is a, a doomed failure. And and jumping right on that 
uh, to the next topic, JT already mentioned it, um, not doing inspections on the property upfront by the seller. And so that in this case includes the, the termite, which is also called the pest inspection and the home inspection. And what that does, what that is essentially the home inspector, it's kind of, and JT likes to use this analogy, I'm gonna steal it from him. It's kind of like a, a, a medical physical exam, general checkup, right? So the inspector will check the foundation. Most of the time they'll check the roof. They'll check that all the mechanical systems of the house are functioning. And that way, if anything, is broken or, or malfunctioning or there is damage to that, it's reported, right? And, and it's an independent um, third, third party that, we've, that the seller hires to, to do that. And that way, the future buyer knows everything possible about the condition of the property, right? And, and that is, again, on, on, the, on the front of risk management and, and, and also just you know, being, being forthright. Make sure escrow goes smoother too, right? All of a sudden, all finding out uh, of an issue, even if it's a minor one, right? That you know you got to get addressed or disclosed or fixed, it can cause delays in an escrow. That you know there's enough to do in an escrow already. Um, you know, they, 30 days uh, for an escrow or 20 or 40, whatever, it goes fast, right? And as you're planning to try and move out, and a buyer's trying to plan to move in. And then if you're trying to handle a bunch of things that you should have uncovered, you know, a month or two ago before you even put the home on the market, you're just creating chaos that didn't need to be created. Right. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but not too many sellers I know have crawled under the into the crawl space of their house, you know, in the last 20 years to really know, you know, how things are looking under there from termites to you know, the duct work to, you know, plumbing to dry rot to, you know, everything. Right. And, and again, you, you're, you can't hide it. You, you might, so you might as well know it all as early as possible. And, and then you can, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, and then, and your, your ability to fix things, you know, on your terms or disclose them and say, I know about this and I'm not going to fix it. You know, but now the buyer at least is aware of it. They know about how much it is. And now you know how to negotiate it in the contract. Um, and, th and that's what's key. And when you, when you don't realize that something's wrong and you've already negotiated a sale, again, it's another surprise that buyers and sellers sh sh didn't need to have happen to either of them. Exactly. That, that's exactly the point I was going to make is that one of the questions I get from a lot of sellers are, hey, Eric, do I have to fix this? right, that's in the report. And actually we have options, right? Yes, if it's reasonable to fix and, and we have someone ready to, to, to repair those items, address those items, and yeah, we, 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 we definitely should to be helping out the future buyer. But like on other larger items, for example, say, you know, the, the furnace is at the end of life, right? In those cases, we don't necessarily need to do it, right? And as long as we just let the buyers know that, hey, you know, most likely based on the condition and the inspector's opinion, they'll probably have to replace it in the near future, right? And so it's it's not required to, to address those issues. It's more about letting um, the potential buyers know about the issues. Yeah, right? awareness, right? Yeah. And so the, awareness so you know how to negotiate. Exactly. And, and going back to what um, um, John was saying earlier was once you're already in escrow, and they, the, 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 the buyer discovers items that, that, that need repair, they will try to negotiate, right? It's almost certain, right? And we avoid that by trying to do, by doing all the negotiation up front, right? And that way there's less surprises for, for both sides, basically. Yeah. And, and let's jump on to the next one. Um, I, a, a common mistake slash question I get is, should we stage the house, right? And, and I think, that, of course, the answer is it depends, but generally from my professional experience, um, to stage or not to stage, I strongly, strongly lean towards the side of, of staging. And, and, the, and for a couple of reasons, one is it makes the house look nice, right? We're, we're selling, we're, we're selling, we're not just selling a, a house, we're selling a home, right? And what's the difference? The home is somewhere, someone pictures they could live in. And so when they, when a lot of buyers see HGTV, right, they, they look on the internet, they see very beautiful homes. And so if, if we can do our best to, to portray that, 
it'll get them more excited. And as they get more excited, it'll end up in a better result for us when when we when we're trying to get as much interest as possible. Yeah, you uh, you know, look at new home developers, right? What do they do, right? They they have a lot of money invested in their developments, right? And and this is done all across the country, not just even in in our local market. They build a model home, and they make the model home look amazing, right? Because they want you know they stage it, they 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 make it, they put in all the upgrade, you know, they make it look wow, right? Uh, even even to where I've I've rep I have I've had to tell buyers before. Now remember, your home won't look quite as good as the model home. So you know, unless you want to buy the model and pay them for all the stuff that they did. So yeah, it's a budget question with a lot of sellers because yeah, staging is it, you know costs money, but you know it, for the most part, I see the return that you get in the price of the home by getting the buyers to just go, wow, like you do when you walk into a brand new model home at a developer, you know, it's, it just makes it, it just creates a wow factor. Exactly. And then the, the next one is, is not marketing the home correctly, right? So nowadays with, with the way our industry has gone, the internet, right, has, has really played a big role in, in the home buying and home selling process. And so um, some mistakes that that buyers make and sellers make, maybe sellers, is that they they don't really understand all the nuances of how to market homes, right? So one one of the things that I recommend and I like to do is I like to post videos, right? People people post pictures and and I strongly encourage professional um, pictures with with uh, HDR and the latest technology, but it's the it's the videos I think that people really come back to that that they really like. And there's, I think, multiple types of videos, right? So there's the professionally shot, expensive video, which I think sometimes is really good. But I think what has been successful in, 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 my, in my opinion also is, is the more candid videos, which can portray someone actually like looking at a house like they would if, if they were walking through the house, right? And so that's, that's what I, I do for all, all of my, my listings, my sellers. Yeah. I mean, I, I would highly encourage every seller to, you know, be talking with their agent about, you know, what is the the plan? And I know, Eric, you're you're good at that, both at traditional marketing. You know, the old fashioned marketing is still good, sending postcards and and some, uh, you know, you know, some even, you know, occasional newspaper ads. But, you know, but also digital marketing and then social and target marketing. Right. I mean, those those are the newer ones that uh, you know. I know you do, Eric, and 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 are critical for uh, you know a seller to be aware of that. There's a lot of new techniques that need to be implemented in order for you to have the best exposure, you know, for uh, for your home. And yes, especially during the pandemic, you know, all these things you're talking about, where you know, as much as somebody can feel like they're in your home while they're sitting, you know, on their laptop is. Uh, is a good plan to have. Exactly, and that leads us right on to, to number seven, is sellers not knowing the, the buyer, right? What do, we, what do we mean by that? Not knowing the demographic, the target audience of who the buyer is gonna be. So one example in our area, it is a lot of folks in Silicon Valley work in the tech industry, right? And so for, for those, those tech workers that have families, then schools are very important, right? And with that more technical background, some of them, right, have, have an interest in those type of programs for their kids, right? So STEAM is, and STEM is, is very, very important. And so knowing that and, and trying to market to them, right, is, is, just, is just so key. At the same time, you know, doing the general overall marketing is 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 essential. But when, once you narrow down, um, it it can be super powerful. You know, we experience it all every day, right? I, I totally agree with you, Eric. You, your you know your job, Eric, which I know you do, is send it to everybody, but also zero in, just like Amazon does, just like Google does. It's like, hey, you know, we think you'll like this book or this shirt because of things you've done in the past, right? Um, and more often than not, they're right, you know, and, and there's ways to do that in real estate, which uh, a good agent like you do, Eric, uh, can target 
you know, certain buyers that have shown a propensity to, you know, um, fall in love with the certain characteristics of a, of a property that you want to send additional efforts to making sure they're aware of the property. Exactly. And a, a real critical thing now on number eight for sellers is not knowing where you're going next, right? So I have some buyers, I'm some sellers that are upsizing, right? Some sellers that are downsizing, right? Are they staying in the area, right? Staying in, in, in the county, moving to a nearby county, moving further away in the state, moving out of state, moving out of the country. And so once we get rolling, right, with, with the way our market is moving, it moves very quickly, right? And so if, if the sellers have a fear, oh, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, go through ask and then we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. Well, what ends up happening is the movers are coming for the buyers, right? And, and you, you gotta get out, right? And so that's, that's a common mistake that we sometimes see. Yeah, I, and I know it's 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 challenging, especially if they're selling and then trying to buy another house in the market we're in right now. They they become that buyer that's challenging to you know that is trying to make an offer on your property, right? And so I know you're able. You know, one of the solutions you have is negotiating. A, you know, a nice rent back for the seller. That that's possible where you can sell and close the home, but not leave for thirty, sixty, or you know, however long might be necessary, um, you know, in order to, you know, find the replacement property. But yeah, the, 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 the better plan you have, you know, the easier it is, the less stress you'll have. Again, there's a lot of stress in putting a home on the market and selling and moving, right? And, and the less stress you can put on yourself by having as clear a plan as possible ahead of time, you know, just makes life easier for everybody. And, and we also have other programs as well um, that, that uh, John is involved with that's helped us out is buying before even selling. Right? Yeah. So um, in, Intero has, has partnerships um, that we can discuss on a future webinar about, um, about doing that, right? So you don't even have to sell your home yet. You can just go buy the, buy the home first and then we can sell your house, right? And, yeah. And folks in our office have been taking advantage of that already. And it's been, it's been very, very helpful. Yeah, if that applies to anybody that's watching this webinar, ask Eric about it. Uh, we we really have some from some really cool options for yeah. uh, for sellers that are in that uh, position that allow them to get the equity out of their home and go buy their next home, you know, before putting their home on the market. So yes, it does cost a little extra to to do that, and you have to be comfortable, you know, owning two homes, right? But sometimes that's more comfortable than not knowing where I'm going, right? So if your if budget is, uh, is available, it's a nice, comfortable way to, to make this decision to buy first and sell second. And a quick aside on that as well, if, if we're talking about, you know, preparing the home for the market, if um, the seller doesn't have the budget to do a renovation and we're interested in doing a renovation to, to make the house look nicer, we also have solutions um, to pay at escrow um, for for the for the updating of the home, right? So it'd be no cost out of pocket um, to the sellers, and you can just um, reach out and I can discuss more details about that as well. So we can even yep. prepare the home um, with no upfront cost to you as well, and we can get the and that huge return on investment on on the on the move-in ready um, home. So I guess I'm going to add, okay, to a, a number eight point five basically. Um, what, one common mistake that sellers make, and I see a lot of marketing out there that says this, is that, oh, you can sell your home as is, right? And, and JT knows where I'm going with this. Yes, you can definitely sell your home as is original condition from 1955. No problem. We can sell that house. Our market is, can handle that. But um, that goes on to number one. On the, on the pricing and, and the expectations of the, of, of the sales price, right? The initial list price and the sales price. So the, 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 the consequence of selling the home in original condition is that you'll get the pricing reflected in that, right? And that's, that's basically it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and, and, and again, talk to Eric if you have any uh, questions about that. Um, most, you know, home prepping, 
to get it to so it it has a little bit of a wow factor isn't as expensive as a lot of people think and the return is amazing i mean the the to spend you know ten thousand dollars to make 30 or 40 i mean who wouldn't do that i mean if, if somebody said hey i got a stock you know that's gonna that's gonna triple or quadruple in value in the next 90 days you know guaranteed right you know or 99 percent, right you know most of us would yeah let's do it and you can do the same with your house with you know a ten thousand dollar investment you know or a, or a relatively small investment you know um can return you you know two three four times the money in 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 90 days it's it's a it's it's worthy to to ask eric about all the creative ways we have uh to help sellers and number nine on on uh mistakes that they are made is only considering the highest price offer on a home, right? So there's a lot of variables in, in the offer. Most people, of course, the very important portion is the price, but the, the buyer's qualifications are also important. The contingencies are very important, right? There's numerous factors that, that come into play in determining what is most likely the, the best, the best um, offer to accept. And it's, it's extremely important. Yeah, you have to remember the best offer is one that closes, right? I mean, a lot of times, you know, a seller can get wrapped up in a number that a buyer offers, but if it never closes because of financing issues or contingency issues or buyer's remorse or et cetera, et cetera, then you, the number doesn't mean anything, you know? So, you know, sometimes, you know, again, you have to look at all factors of, of an offer, even to who the buyer's agent is, right? It's like, you know, I, that, that's a critical factor. Do they have good uh, uh, customer control? Have they advised the buyer properly about, you know, what they're getting into and what they're buying? You know, I mean, there's all, you know, there's just a lot of variables that, you know, again, a seller needs to rely on, on the advice of a, of a good agent and not just look at, you know, the top line, you know, hey, the offering price. It, it, look, it's hard not to we, when you're human. You see that number and, it, and, it's, and it's attractive, but if you have something that's a stronger terms with a little less, we have sellers all the time that understand that that might be a better route to go than taking the risk uh, on, you know, again, it's a, you're playing, the, you're a little bit playing the, going to Vegas, right? It's like, well, you know, it, 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 if you want to take a riskier offer and hope that you, you know, that it closes, you know, that's a decision that, you, you know, you, as long as you make that, you know, um, consciously, that's fine. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just something that you got to review with your agent. It's not always the best, uh, the highest offer. That's the best offer. Right. And, and number 10 on, on seller mistakes is not hiring an agent at all, trying to sell it by yourself or hiring the wrong agent, right? Um, that, I, 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 unfortunately, right, I see that happen and it, it's, it's very unfortunate when it does. Can I read between the lines and that says, not hiring Eric Chu uh, <laughs> to uh, help you, uh, you know, have a great experience and sell your home for the most amount of money in the shortest amount of time. It's Eric Chu that can do it. Yeah, we, we, can, take, we can take care of you and you know, <laughs> we can avoid all those mistakes. Right. Yeah. And that's that's the that's the ultimate goal. Um, yeah. So I think uh, we'll 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 wrap it up right now. And um, thank you, John, for for joining us. Um, if anyone has any um, questions or additional um, topics they'd like us to discuss, um, feel free to send us a message on um, you know any of the platforms, and uh, we can um, address them in the future. Thank you, Eric, for uh, inviting me on the call. Thank you uh, for being a great agent and working for uh, Intero. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I, um, I'm, I'm excited about anybody that gets to work with you because I know their experience will be top notch. Thank you very much, AP. All right, everyone, have a, have a great evening.